The muon G minus 2 experiment measures the anomalous magnetic moment of the muon. Uh, you can think of the muon as a little spinning top, and we measure exactly how fast it precesses in a magnetic field. Uh, when the muon decays, it spits out a positron, and that positron tends to come out in the direction of the muon spin. And this allows us to measure how fast the muon was spinning in that really well-known magnetic field. Greg Bach and I are here today to blind the clock frequencies for the G-2 experiment. In order to prevent anyone from changing these frequencies or even uh, looking to know what they are, we have this door which covers the front of the panel and locks. The blinded frequencies that were selected today get incorporated into all the data that will be collected for the next year and prevent the scientists working on the experiment from connecting the data to a specific physical meaning until the blinded frequencies are revealed. And only Greg and I will know what those two frequencies are. So when they perform this very precise measurement for the G-2 experiment, there will be two numbers that they don't know until we, at the very end of the experiment, unblind them. And that will allow them to then extract the real result of the experiment without knowing ahead of time what the experiment is showing. So we've been talking about doing this blinding for several years within the experiment. Uh, one of the really nice things about blinding a synthesizer is that you can very precisely set it to a value that's very close to the value you want. It's a clock, it's designed uh, to be tuned to a very specific value. This is not very common in physics or science generally. It's, it's an extra layer of care when you're worried about your subconscious brain. If you know what a result should be or you think you know what it should be, even if you're the most honest scientist in the world, your subconscious brain does things depending on what it's expecting. And this is a way of just making sure that your, even your subconscious expectations do not affect the result of the experiment. And they call that blinding, and it's, it's there as an extra layer of security, if you like, not for anyone doing anything wrong, but for your subconscious brain seeing what it wants to see. And the really nice thing about this process is that we're effectively just stretching the metric of time. We know that we know uh, what a what a clock tick is supposed to take, and sort of like a metronome. And if it's ever slow, slightly detuned, it won't affect any of the processes that that we're looking at. Uh, so this is a really attractive way of uh, of hiding from the scientists uh, the the answer. Well, I've never been on an experiment that blinded things in exactly this way. We've done it uh, uh, by uh, limiting the uh, the. Uh, parts of the analysis that people use after it on a couple of experiments, so that part uh, has been done before, but uh, uh, putting the uh, offset the way that we did here right into the, the, the incoming data stream is uh, certainly new for me. 